I was born in Falkirk in 1931. My mother's name was Violet Isabella Scott, and my father was Thomas Blackadder. He, he was very encouraging. He would have liked me to be an engineer. <laughs> you know, I'd take my bicycle to pieces or something, and you say, well, you have to put it back together again and clean it, and, you know, and how does this work? That was my father who encouraged me to draw, because he drew quite a lot. Uh, it was part of his business, I suppose, mechanical drawing. I think we were quite a close-knit family. Both my mother and father, I think, read a lot. I didn't have a great social life. It was just after the war. And I wasn't particularly interested, I think. And then when I came to Edinburgh, I didn't have any time. I liked drawing from the figure, which I did a lot of when I was in college, both as a student and teaching. One who, who was very influential, Henderson Blythe, Robert Henderson Blythe, had a great influence on painting students. He was very helpful uh, at that stage, you know, I think probably be second year. He, you know, emphasised things like drawing and the structure, if you're drawing landscape or, say, buildings or something, you know, making tonal sketches and colour drawings, sketches before maybe starting painting and things like that. And I remember Anne Redpath and William Gillis made a great impression. You know, you see it and you do it. You know, you don't sit and wait for something to happen. <laughs> I was very interested in still life painting and just even the way of handling the paint. You know, you find your own way of, well, it's like anything, your own way of, of writing or what kind of canvas you want to use or in what kind of paper you want to use. I ch changed from thinking still life was uh, where you painted a cup and a saucer and a jug and on a table. I thought that was pretty dull. Uh, and I realised it had nothing to do with that at all. It had to do with the balance of one object, shape, colour against the other. It was like any kind of painting. And once I got over that, I, uh, this is why I think I use uh, still life so much. Um, what you can do with it. I don't set them up or anything. I build it up. I have a vague idea of what I want. It might, but it might change through the, the working of it. But I would never set up a still life. I see something in the studio, or maybe see it just in a certain light. You know, if you go past and one day, I think, well, oh, that's interesting, how it relates to maybe the background, and then. You sort of build up something else. So you, I don't really know how it's going to end up. We didn't have cats until we went to Queen's Crescent. I always liked cats and it was really in Queen's Crescent. I started drawing them. I wasn't too sure about it because I didn't... I thought cats and flowers are dangerous, you know. They can be too pretty or something. So I, I sort of looked at a lot of paintings of cats and like Born Out and Gwen John and people like that that I admired as painters in any way. That's when I started drawing cats. They're so flexible, aren't they? I, I did look at the, uh, books of anatomy on cats and things like that. I, they would be in the studio uh, because they, you know, they love lying on paper. They would lie on, on the painting or if I was doing a painting. It's quite difficult. We maybe have to do whole lots of drawings, you know, because we'll move even when they're sleeping or turn head over and so on. We do whole lots of drawings until you get something. We travelled in Europe quite a lot by car. I, I, well, I did a lot of watercolours on the spot and, and sitting on beaches and things. And when going to Japan and, and being such a totally different environment, a lot of the paintings I did were just about that and maybe how I sort of reacted to certain things there and to a lot of the, the paintings and the screen paintings. 
We were both interested in uh, Japanese art and architecture and there was just so much to see, we kept going back. I did quite a lot of drawings in, in the inns of the, of the floors and the, the, the windows were quite often paper screens. I may, I may have used some gold paint before, but then seeing the squares of the gold leaf itself as backgrounds to some of the Japanese screens and so paper on board uh, is quite good for it and then you stick on these spheres and, and hope that we'll all <laughs> stay there. <laughs> I, I quite like working with that etching and aquatint. So. I've always been encouraged by the people in the print studio to try a different process like screen printing, which I didn't think would suit me at all. I, I found it uh, quite interesting to try out these different techniques. You always used to tell the students, try different materials, because you'll get something else, something different out. You don't just stick to one thing. It all opens up a whole new, a whole new possibilities of, of texture, of surface and so on. I know some people don't like working alongside other people. I quite enjoy it because, you know, otherwise you're in the studio and you're on your own all the time. All right, uh, there's two of us, it's not so bad, you know, but uh, you're not really seeing other people. Although some people had, oh, fancy being married to another painter. But actually it, it works out very well because we both know that but we can't have a, a great social life because either one of us or the other has got a sort of deadline. <laughs> um, and also maybe it doesn't interest us all that much. We've both got two studios. I've got a big table for watercolours in the studio. And I've got easels in the other studio, so it's, it's easy. And I can just go between the two. And, and John is the same, although he mainly works in this oil studio. I might in one day go between the two. <laughs> if I finish something or I don't want to go on with it at that moment, I'll go do either watercolour or oil. I, I play quite a lot of music in the studio. I have tapes and discs and things. Well, it's mainly classical music. So I might listen to opera on Radio 3. I'm very fond of the late Schubert, Beethoven sonatas and so on. I, I like other kind of music and my husband plays jazz in his studio. <laughs> but I'm fond of some of the, the things he plays and he likes the things I play. I come down about nine o'clock, cook supper. <laughs> I like cooking, it's quite like painting I think. <laughs> I never know how it's going to end up. Well, I've been quite fortunate, I think, so I can't complain. And sometimes you get a good write-up and sometimes you get a... I just have to think, well, so, so what? <laughs> and just go on.